This project took a look at the Je Thomas Jefferson's notes from the state of Virginia and tried to visualize the dialogue between uh, Thomas Jefferson and William Short, his secretary at the time and, and longtime friend. And the idea was to uh, use a timeline that's wrapped around a circle to visualize how uh, the discourse uh, between the two men uh, revolved around a number of topics. And so Scott French and I came up with the, a series of, of topics like slave labor, agricultural reform, sharecropping, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, um, and Scott went through the, uh, the letters between the two men and mapped them over time and then coded them for these particular items. And so we, we put it onto a timeline. I'll, I'll play the timeline real slowly here. You can see each each one of the lines represents when they talked about a particular item, and then uh, each each of the these things represent a letter. When you click on it, it brings up the letter, and of course you can you can always see the original letter. Uh, and and Scott came up with excerpts and came up with things that, that were interesting about it. And then uh, essentially what you can do is roll through this thing and see where they talked about particular ideas. So, for example, if we were looking in, interested in rebellion, rebellion or manumission, say, we could say, let's, let's highlight manumission. So that's the only one that's colored here. And we can look at it and say they talked about it various times. Um, and and uh, so in this case, it's a letter uh, from William Short to Jefferson. He talked about it here. And you can see how, how these things interplayed. So it was a graphical way of looking at looking at, at those things. So th that, that was interesting. And uh, by looking through it, you can, you can kind of parse through the conversation. Uh, we also uh, visualized uh, where the discourse came from, because uh, uh, Jefferson and Short were, were across, uh, across the Atlantic. And so you could look through the letters, and each one of these represents a letter. Um, and you can see how it, how it it visualized over time, uh, and you can also see their positions. And this was an interesting thing of of encoding uh, human feeling uh, graphically. So Scott went through and and and, just, and kind of made a, a decision about how uh, Jefferson and Short felt about uh, uh, expatriation, forced removal. Of, of the enslaved people over time, and you can see how how the uh, how Jefferson's opinion really didn't change a lot, but Short kind of met him uh, more, and both of them obviously drifted apart at, after there. This visualization was done by a, a then undergraduate student at UVA, Kate Hartman, who had spent a summer uh, in India at a nunnery uh, for uh, exiled uh, uh, Tibetan nuns, and uh, and kind of tracked what, what they did all day. So uh, each one of these dots represents a particular person. That's Lobsong, Angmo, and what they did at any given time. So let, let's concentrate on the morning and we'll follow Lobsong along. I'm gonna make it kind of slow and let's, let's play it. So, so now we can see she wakes up, she, uh, she goes, uh, if you follow the green dot here, uh, she goes to various things, and it talks about what she did. And so we're following any given uh, person around, and they all go into for puja, which is a religious service there. And um, and as as time goes on, uh, they, do, they do various things. And now we can follow any number of them. Right now we're following Lop Sung, uh, but we could also have followed uh, uh, Paul Dunn, although she was old. And if we look here... She doesn't leave her, her, her house very much. But others, so for example, this person, Tashi, does get around a little bit more. And so you can follow them. Um, by clicking on the uh, various uh, places, uh, Kate had taken a bunch of pictures while she was there about it. A member of the Central Virginia uh, Historical Researchers, Alice Cannon, 
uh, purchased a house uh, in uh, about 20 years ago um, that would that had a fairly large enslaved population and Alice uh, took it upon herself to research all the people that, that lived in the house and so she uh, she went through and very mis uh, she's an artist as well and very time consumingly went through and and researched the the who these people were and you can see how many enslaved people there were over time uh, and she and and the visualization goes through it so if you click on any given one at any given time um, there's not much information on, on those but here we know more about them. In the beginning, we, this is a, an exercise in pro progressive disclosure. So uh, the timeline shows what, what was happening at any given time and then how many uh, enslaved people were there. And, and in the beginning, it shows the historical record. We really didn't know much about the enslaved people up to this point. Uh, then we know uh, more about them. We know it's a male age 15 uh, uh, on any given one of these. But we didn't know. We don't really know much else about them. We just we don't know their names. As time goes on, the historical record gets uh, richer, and we and we can click on it, and um, and she actually found out who these people were, and did uh, these beautiful uh, drawings of them or or uh, paintings, and uh, and went through it and went did an amazing uh, biography of their lives. So, uh, but what's interesting is as time goes on, we start to know more. We know um, we know their race at this point. We know their age, uh, obviously. And now we start getting around 1865 because uh, post-emancipation, we uh, we get to know uh, their names uh, and what they were, pay how much uh, they they had had paid uh, from some wills that she'd found. And then as you go through, you get last names, and then finally, uh, she started to color the the, uh, the the outside boxes by how many uh, about the families that they were they were in, and so uh, you can see more information that she has, and it's just a very rich uh, document of, of the people that lived in her house over time, and and they, so so if you look at the the documents, so here are the so in, initially she started out with with a, with the with the will and which she transcribed which is and then as you go further in uh, the 1820 census shows some um, 1830 census the land deed and the 1850 slave schedule which shows the people and what she knew at any given time Etc. Anyway, it's just a wonderful project. This final project was done with religious studies scholar and professor uh, Curtis Schaefer and a bunch of, of uh, first year undergraduate students, which kind of is amazing what they can do. Um, so uh, in a digital humanities class. And what we were looking at doing, it was visualizing the, uh, the uh, a, a handwritten uh, transcript of the of the 1828 University of Virginia Library, which reflected very much what what uh, Thomas Jefferson had, had outlined. So, if we look at it, uh, we could look at the kinds of books they were, of what languages they were in, um, and, it, and this was a, an interesting thing where we took a, a database that was relatively limited. So basically, we knew the, the books, the size, the author, and, and and they were short titles too, and what categories. Uh, they wanted to to uh, to uh, put them in, and we uh, we tried to see what how can we visualize that information in a way that would that, that could say something about it. So uh, we could look at the country publication. Uh, we could look at what books survived the 1895 fire. Uh, we could view look at the finds, and there's an interesting one here, uh, right here. Edgar Allan Poe uh, got a bunch of finds while he was there. Um, and uh, and then we did a full research guide about uh, what how we did the work, and that, that was kind of interesting. Um, it's amazing how much information we were able to get um, from just a, a very limited resource. So we looked at the library in the world. So here's a visualization. We knew where they were, so we could we could look at any given place, and we could see the books published in the U.S. The book published in Germany, 
Um, we could zoom into Europe and look at uh, various places, Switzerland, etc. And it, and it was a way to show the language, whatever information we had about it. If we double click on a, on a book, it'll, it'll connect us to whatever that is and show us information about that book. So we know it's uh, Epictetus uh, in English, in, published in London, it's October, it, and we know that it survived the fire. Uh, the following year, we did a, another a visualization which looked at early student life based on that data. And so we could look at, um, uh, over time, uh, classes taken by students, where they were taken. Um, these were from uh, logs, if I'm not mistaken. We could click on them and see where they, where they were from, the students were from at various times. And not surprisingly, they're mainly from, from Virginia, a little bit from West Virginia here and there, and from, from other states. Uh, you, could, you could see where these things were on grounds, And that was a useful uh, show of the information. And finally, we did a, a visualization about the burning of the rotunda. So in 1895, the, the uh, rotunda at the University of Virginia burned down. And so uh, uh, presumably by Trolley Stein. So the research what it was. And if we, if we look here, we'll, I'll play the timeline relatively slow so we can see what goes on. A spark starts a fire from a trolley. Um, students notice the fire, etc. Um, and so there's a timeline, and you can see that the fire is now spreading from the front of the rotunda to the back. Anyway, then different student groups did other kinds of things. We looked at the images from there, and there were a bunch of great images um, about the fire. Um, there's some eyewitness reports. And there's a reenactment of that. October 28, 1895. My dear Sadie, by the time you get this letter, you will have heard of the dreadful fire we have had here, and how the dear old rotunda is all burned down, and nothing left standing but the walls, the front and back porches, and some blackened pillars. A little creepy, but interesting. Um... Uh, we could explore the fire. So that's it for uh, for the old version of Visualize. We uh, Flash became uh, a non-starter for, for for use in in these kinds of projects, and we. Uh, we moved on to the HTML5 version, and you can look at all those live. Over time, I think the the, uh, the Flash versions are going to be uh, 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 not visible at some point. So um, that's why we made this movie. Thank you.